With no atmosphere, solar panels on the moon would receive 1.8 times more energy than on Earth, and 2.3 times more than on Mars. This advantage can be pushed even further at the poles, where the sun almost never drops below the horizon. Some solar peaks receive sunlight more than 90% of the time, so sun-tracking solar panels could be three times more productive than on Earth, and four times more than on Mars, providing near-constant energy. This is crucial, since elsewhere on the Moon, the two-week period of darkness from sundown to sunrise would pose a significant energy storage problem. With the sun never high in the sky, but also rarely absent from it, the poles solve two of the Moon's biggest problems. It provides a relatively consistent temperature and a place where water ice can be found. At the previously mentioned polar peaks, temperatures are stable around negative 50 degrees Celsius. Although a reasonable temperature, the few peaks that exist are very small and will likely only have solar panels on them. Polar temperatures at medium elevations range from negative 130 to negative 190, but considering other locations on the Moon fluctuate 300 degrees between night and day, these cold but consistent temperatures are desirable for base building. The bottoms of some craters never receive any sunlight and can be colder than Pluto. Being shielded from the sun, they're the only place on the moon where water ice and other volatiles can be found. Overall, with ample sunlight, stable temperatures, and access to water ice, a lunar base at the poles is definitely doable. But will there be enough solar energy on Mars? Martian sunlight is 60% as strong as we're used to. But with a thin atmosphere, it stays this strong throughout the whole day. Therefore, we should be able to make good use of solar panels on Mars. Martian dust does build up on panels, reducing their efficiency, but humans could just brush it off. And although global dust storms can block sunlight for up to eight weeks at a time, this only occurs every six or seven Earth years. So solar power will be important on both the Moon and Mars, but ultimately you can achieve two to four times as much energy per panel on the Moon. Despite this, in the following section, I'll explain why a lunar settlement could actually have a harder time meeting its energy needs. Sunlight isn't available on the moon in a form useful for growing crops. Plants won't grow in a 30-day light-dark cycle, and without significant shielding, solar flares would kill any that tried. Greenhouses would be susceptible to micrometeorites and would create boiling temperatures inside if put anywhere but the lunar poles. The engineering requirements of growing plants in natural light on the moon are so immense that it's likely all plants will be grown in artificial light. Hydroponic systems are good at conserving water and increasing crop yields, but feeding any significant population this way will require unreasonable amounts of energy. On average, a hydroponic growing area of one meter squared requires one megawatt hour of energy per year. If we assume that hydroponics can grow 20 times more food than traditional farming practices using the same amount of space, it would still require 20 square meters of growing space to feed one person with hydroponic crops. This amounts to 20 megawatt hours of energy per year per person, or 20 to 35 square meters of lunar solar panels per person just to grow their food. On Mars, there's an atmosphere to protect crops from solar flares and micrometeorites. So inflatable plastic domes with only minimal UV shielding could be used to create cropland right on the surface. The carbon dioxide needed by plants could be pumped directly from the Martian atmosphere, and the greenhouse effect would provide warmth for a suitable climate inside. This, plus the 24-hour day-night cycle, makes Mars the only place in our solar system, besides Earth, where plants could grow on the surface in natural light. So although lunar solar panels can produce a significant amount of energy, you'd need a lot of them if you plan to power even a modest hydroponic farm. Whereas Martian crops can get their energy directly from the sun. If you plan to do anything in space economically, you have to live off the land. This means building solar panels, growing crops, and getting oxygen and water directly from lunar and Martian resources. Thanks for watching. Here's the next part in the Moon vs. Mars series, or you can find the full-length video in the description below.